hey welcome to the next channel so whenever you are uh, uh, learning about uh, networking you must have stumbled across the mtu and then um, initially it will be difficult to understand but uh, down the line you will understand that uh, mtu uh, which stands for uh, maximum transferable unit and um, Uh, MTU is a measure uh, uh, where in which uh, the maximum number of bytes if uh, you know network interface can transfer in the uh, you know given uh, layer 2 technology which is coupled with the physical layer all always you should understand uh, uh, any time you have a specific uh, physical layer technology the uh, data link layer uh, technology will also be associated with the same so if you have a ethernet uh, card uh, let it be wireless or wired whatever it is let it be you know <laughs> a gigabit ethernet card or else a 10 gig ethernet card whatever it is so whenever you say that it is an ethernet card it is going to have a, uh, the network frames will be sent as uh, you know ethernet uh, uh, packets i mean ethernet frames so, so any time um, you discuss uh, the data pdus or whatever is sent across you should technically call them as frames because frames do encapsulate so uh, it's a you know payload as a network packets so any time you refer as packets it should technically you are referring uh, whatever is above uh, on this you know layer 2 context so any time if you deal with uh, ipv4 uh, packets anything which has to do with the tcp udp or stuff like that uh, you should refer as packets whereas any time if you consider uh, the bare uh, you know layer 2 context you should refer as uh, frames so that way if you see uh, the actual communication happens in the form of uh, network frames um, and the packets are on top of the frames okay so that way if you see you have the empty value the empty value decides what is the total uh, number of bytes a specific uh, you know a frame can be okay so so we set the empty on a network uh, port as you can see uh, let me do an if config so i was uh, doing some uh, kernel code and i was um, i was doing some uh, kernel optimization code once i even uh, shot a video episode as you can see here kernel uh, the linux uh, channel so i am uh, doing some type of optimized kernel i am stripping away several uh, parts so that it is highly optimized and it also gives uh, superior performance and i am trying to strip out uh, Uh, various other uh, unwanted features and unwanted uh, stuff for a basic um, usage scenario okay so as a part of that i was uh, going through the source and i was uh, you know uh, doing some changes and which is when i stumbled across the path empty so path empty is something uh, where uh, sometimes i do get queries from my students uh, initially they are uh, confused about the empty itself and then again they get confused about the path empty so i thought uh, let me take a very quick overview about the same so you set uh, the empty over here for each port as you can see here this port it has 1500 bytes this has 1500 bytes whereas this is a local host which has this 65536 um you should imagine uh, the local host uh, port is a virtual interface as you understand this is not anything uh, which has any limits like hardware or anything like that it is a software uh, network port so which is the reason they have provided a highest possible empty value and you should also note the more the empty is the more you will get the bandwidth and also you can take advantage of any uh, tcp like you know transport layer uh, applications i'm not saying application means application layer protocol i'm saying use cases okay tcp like use cases so if you are doing any file transfer if you are doing some type of uh, you know database uh, you know copy or something like that if you are doing some bulk you know data transfers uh, uh, what happens is uh, the more uh, bigger the mtu value you need less you know chunks so that's the main advantage of uh, having a large mtu which is why for a local host you don't need to keep the mtu value which is equivalent to a network a physical port which is why it has a higher mtu value so this will optimize the system which technically means let's assume you are doing some type of hyperf hyperf minus s so we are running this hyperf you open another tab hyperf minus c let's uh, put local host so which is nothing but 127.0.0.1 okay so if you do that and in case by chance if you capture this uh, you know uh, uh, packets in wireshark yep uh, 
let us uh, capture in a local host so the transaction may be over uh, what we do is we try to repeat the same test so that we get fresh you know sample capture yeah as you can see here each of this uh, frame is around 65549 so it is quite a large frame okay this is the advantage you get with large empty values so large empty values will allow you to send a super huge frames which is why in gigabit uh, ethernet you have this uh, jumbo frames and all the stuff okay so that's the main advantage the more you ch you know chop this uh, you know data uh, or a file which you need to transfer and then uh, you you are uh, sending uh, each such you know chunk with ip header tcp header or udp header whatever nonsense and then you are adding the overhead actually so which is why the less number of times you chop this the more uh, faster the network is going to be because you need less amount of packets or else frames to be sent and uh, to send one gb file let's assume uh, it is uh, chopping one million times whereas if you change the mtu it is now chopping around uh, you know 300 uh, uh, 000, uh, you know frames or packets then what happens is it will go much faster so this is the sort of thing so this is meant again for an advanced uh, uh, you know network architect he deals uh, day to day these type of things he may work on some stn stuff he may work on some uh, uh, i do work with my clients and uh, we do have certain uh, challenges like this and we do address these things uh, quite common so uh, please note this is something may start as a very simple stuff but uh, as you advance in your career this will be a critical factor to optimize your network and also to optimize your um, you know overall uh, network infrastructure okay so that's what so you can see here this will be done in a different way whereas if i capture the packets of my you know regular ethernet port it will be sent as a mtu sized chunks so that is why we set the mtu uh, accordingly but the problem is if you go to the real uh, internet um, uh, there are certain places they may do some type of MPLS uh, circuits, they may do L2 on L3, they may do L3 tunneling, they may do L2 uh, on, uh, you know, to avoid L3 overhead or routing overhead, they may do switching and then they do, uh, you know, packet transfer from end to end, stuff like that. So this is again, uh, it depends on what ISP infrastructure he built within his, uh, you know, I ISP deployment, okay. That way, if you see the entire uh, internet itself, as we know, is built with uh, you know thousands of uh, routing hops, and uh, any time you reach any specific server, you open a YouTube uh, uh, or else a Facebook website, it goes through you know thousands of um, nodes, and uh, and of course it has a specific limit. Let me not <laughs> go much in depth. So it has to uh, hop through all these uh, intermediate hops or the routing uh, nodes, and then it has to reach that uh, you know remote server. So the ISP uh, may do some type of tunneling, he may do some, uh, you know, as I said, MPLS or any type of circuits he may build within that, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure. So sometimes what happens is, uh, let's assume, uh, let me take this uh, sheet of uh, paper. So if I roll it somewhat like this, so as you can see, it has this much, you know, diameter, something like that. Let's assume this is your LAN uh, 1500 uh, typical MTU. So in the case of uh, some of the intermediate nodes, so let's take another sheet of paper. So let's roll it a bit tighter. And uh, let's assume uh, somewhere down the lane in the routing hops, you may have an MTU like this. So this may be a value of uh, 1400 or uh, uh, just 900 or 800 bytes, something like that. Now what happens is we are connecting, we are trying to co connect eventually a network with this type of MTU. The frames are generated or the packets are around 1500 bytes and then it is trying to pass this, uh, you know, smaller MTU sized links. And this is the problem happens and uh, to cope up you do uh, uh, chopping again these uh, packets into IP fragments. So we fragment these packets into multiple fragments, let it be a couple of fragments or uh, you know uh, into multiple fragments, sometimes just two or sometimes more than two. So we fragment the same and then we try to pass this uh, you know packets in this 
you know channel so this way it can pass through the same and then eventually when it reaches that other device it is going to defragment the same and it is going to assemble and then it is going to get this uh, get back the you know original data what uh, you are supposed to send so if you are sending a file it is going to chop the file convert them into packets send these packets and in the middle somewhere the isp has a network whether it is your local isp or else the other end isp has another network it has a lower mt it is going to chop this packets into smaller sized uh, fragmented ipv4 packets and then he is going to route those packets and in the end you are going to defragment them and you are going to construct the packets and then uh, from there you are going to uh, you know get back the data uh, packet by packet and then you are going to get back your uh, the file to be transferred at the other end so this is what happens so let it be a file or else just a chat message or else you are watching a video let it be in any scenario so this is what essentially happens and uh, the top most layer as we know application layer just takes care of what to be sent and uh, everything else is handled in the kernel space typically by the ipv4 uh, stack and uh, down below that you have this uh, layer 2 part of you know uh you know network uh, software layer okay so whenever you think about layer 2 to uh, no application layer you should imagine this is the software layer and below that is your uh, physical layer is your uh, you know hardware layer okay so that's what so that way we have uh, an interesting command called uh, trace path and uh, trace path is a nice command trace path you can see here it is a command which can uh, uh, you know do uh, uh, you know discovering mtu along with this path so it can do that mtu discovery and then we can get like a trace route we can see a, how it traverses okay so you have certain options you can use this minus i and b which can uh, print both host name and ip addresses and n primarily prints ip addresses numerically and apart from that uh, option 4 for ipv4 only so since we are using it for ipv4 i am going to choose uh, n b and 4 options so let's go out and uh, we do a trace uh, path minus n b 4 i think n and b are optional so it's fine even 4 is optional so we do to this uh, google uh, dns uh, server uh, the standard uh, google dns server so we do the same as you can see here it is showing the local host is uh, 1500 bytes uh, m2 uh, size and uh, after it uh, crossing my Xiaomi router, the other end of the Xiaomi router, which is uh, a PPPoE connection, I have this uh, connection in Bangalore called ACT FiberNet. So uh, the ACT FiberNet is uh, is a fiber uh, network to the you know those uh, uh, you know we call as point of uh, PoE devices or something. I forgot its name. So that is terminated, the fiber is terminated there, but from there to the home, they terminate via standard wired ethernet, okay, so that's what. So you can see here, uh, let me not traverse the full path because it may take some time, I'm not interested about going all the way. But anyway, as you can get some idea, uh, somewhere after it crosses that Xiaomi router, the M2 value has changed, which means it is going to clip this packets to introduce that PPPoE part of you know uh, the actual uh, transfers in the you know my isp network uh, hopefully okay so that's what so this uh, gives that hint and uh, we can do for any you know host let's just do it for uh, google.com and let's see where it goes so effectively even uh, you can get the entire path but if it takes time somewhere uh, maybe any uh, network uh, devices may be you know hampering this and they may drop this particular packet so we, we are not sure it can be a tar pit or something okay we are not sure uh, i suggest one more uh, technique is you can enable wireshark uh, let me cancel this and let me listen on uh, eno1 which is my ethernet uh, wired ethernet uh, network port and then uh, you can do the same so that we can see how the packets uh, getting transferred okay so you can see here it is uh, doing once again and one can understand path mtu protocol works on utp uh, so 
you can see here it is uh, sending this UDP packets and it is getting this um, standard ICMP packets. It is just like you know trace route okay so it is sending the UDP and it is getting it. So that way as I demonstrated this sheet of paper example if there is any smaller MTU uh, you know than your uh, standard uh, 1500 bytes what happens is uh, this uh, router or something is going to intimate saying that uh, it has this empty value so we will come to know where exactly in the middle it converges to the least amount of empty value so sometimes it is important when an architect sees this uh, we can clip down the empty in the source itself okay this is going to reduce a lot of bottleneck down the lane because you know, <laughs> uh, it's like, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, no matter uh, how fast you send the packets in this LAN network. Center.